afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. Consciously are one God's, we are one people of God, formed by the Word and nourished by the sacrament. We come together this afternoon, joined by, of course, all those who have joined us through the internet. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery, we pause and call to mind our sins and failings, mindful of God's mercy, redeeming forgiveness, and compassion. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. 
She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor, extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying peace and security, Then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or darkness, Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. And he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward bringing an additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then, one, then the one who received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to, whoever, for to everyone who has, more will be given and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and the grinding of teeth. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This parable of the talents is... Uh, very interesting one. We have to keep in mind that Matthew is still talking about the end time when Jesus will come in glory and he'll bring all creation and all of creation's life to its fullness. That's the context of what Matthew was presenting here in terms of what Jesus taught. In that context, the parable of the talents addresses the issue of what we do while we're waiting for the end time. It was one of the most pressing issues we know in the first century of the church. We hear that reflected in today's second reading where Paul tells the church in Thessalonica that they should not worry about the timing of the day of the Lord because it will, in Paul's words, come like a thief in the night. Even Jesus told his disciples to not look for signs because only the God whom Jesus called his Father knows the time of the coming of the Lord in glory. I'm sure that I've told you this story, and if I haven't, you've probably heard it a dozen times, but I'll tell you again. One day in a bishop's office, the secretary buzzed into the bishop and said, Bishop, there's a fellow on his way up on the elevator who says he's the Lord. What should we do? The bishop replied, look busy. <laughs> Maybe that's what Matthew was telling us by recounting the parable of the talents. It's important not only to look busy, but to be busy. Be busy about the business of the Lord as we await his second coming. I suppose that we could think about this parable on two levels. First, of course, on a personal level. You and I are disciples of Jesus, and as such, there's nothing about our lives that cannot and should not be about the gospel. Commentators teach us 
that this parable isn't primarily about the talents and the gifts that God gave to us to use, like the ability to sing or play the piano or to conduct business or anything else we associated with being talented. And yet, our talents and abilities are part of the gift of life that God gave to each one of us. He entrusted to us as he entrusted the talents, which was money, to those servants in the parable. There is nothing that is not of God, and there's nothing that isn't from God. And so I think it's legitimate to consider all of our abilities within the context of the question that is central to this parable. What are we going to do with the life that's been given to us that will promote the presence of the graced kingdom of God in our midst, even as we await its fulfillment in glory? I think we can go to the Beatitudes and we can go to the Gospel for next week for the answer to that question. The Beatitudes teach us what our discipleship in Jesus should look like. The Beatitudes te teach us what our life needs to look like. And next week's Gospel, the well-known passage about as long as you did this for one of these, my least ones, you did it for me, both of these gospel passages call us to open our hearts to others. That's how we live in preparation for the coming in glory. We cannot live the Beatitudes and we can't treat others as we would want ourselves to treat Christ unless we take risks like the two servants who decided to invest the master's money in ventures that proved successful and made the master even more money. That approach versus the servant who buried the money and simply sat on it and did nothing. He wasn't a risk taker. To be persons of the Beatitudes and persons whom the Jesus of the last day will sit on his right side, we have to be willing to risk being open to others in their needs and in their joys and in their sorrows. We have to be willing to empty ourselves in order to fill another. Maybe there's a second level to the parable in today's gospel, other than this personal level that I've been speaking of. And that's what I would call maybe the communal level. By that I mean, we also await the final coming of Jesus by how we engage life that transcends our personal gifts and talents. For example, We've been given a whole creation over which we have been set as stewards. When the Lord comes in glory, what will we as a community of human beings present to the Lord as a result of our stewardship? If we have stewardship over personal things like money, time, talents, we also have stewardship over a creation that we share with everyone else on this planet. In Laudato Si, Pope Francis reminds all of us that our stewardship over creation impels us to protect its resources, to not squander them, and not to use them purely for individual wealth building. Creation we know is given to everyone, and therefore everyone as a human family will need to account for how our stewardship over creation took shape and form. I've spoken before, you know, about the situation that was the main consideration in the Synod of the Amazon, and that is the condition of the Amazon forest, including the indigenous peoples who inhabit it and have from time immemorial. As a very concrete example, what will we be able to say to Jesus when he comes in glory, when he sees the Amazon region and what's been done to it? How will we explain the extinction of whole tribes of indigenous peoples? What will we use as a justification for taking their land that they've used from time immemorial to feed and clothe and house themselves because we want their timber and their gold and their other minerals? What will we be able to return to the Lord? Will it be a less land 
Will it be that we will return less land than he gave us because of the rising ocean level due to our carbon footprint? Will we give him back a diminished earth, less than what he gave us? How will we explain away the deaths of thousands because we refuse to take them in at our borders, leaving some to die in the deserts and some in the swirling waters of the sea? We read these strong words in the book of Deuteronomy. Cursed be he who prevents the justice due to the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow. And what will we use to explain away children separated from their mothers and fathers, and yet other children dying of malnutrition in refugee camps scattered throughout the world? What will we present to the Lord when he comes in glory? Now, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if some of you, maybe all of you, aren't sitting there listening to me saying, boy, he's in a glum mood today. <laughs> Actually, not at all. I'm trying to capture for myself the serious mood of our readings for these last few weeks of our liturgical year. And I'm trying to do that while reading the newspaper. There's a soberness in our liturgy these final weeks before Advent. And it's a soberness that is not intended to point fingers or lead to a feeling of helplessness or hopelessness. Rather, it's the feeling instilled by Paul and the Gospel writers, a feeling that we still have time to prepare ourselves for the end times, for the day of the Lord. We have the wherewithal, to get ourselves ready to meet the Lord. We always have the opportunity to begin anew, to renew our resolve, and to trust in the ultimate mercy of God. It is the spirit of our responsorial psalm that is, that is the underlying theme song of our sober considerations. Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork, Blessed shall you be forever. That's the vision. To be blessed. To experience God's favor. That's the goal. Then the psalmist sings, The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Zion is anticipated right here at this table of the Lord. Our prosperity is the bread of life and the, cup of, and the cup of redemptive mercy we share. We anticipate in our prayer these weeks the words of the coming season of Advent. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I want you to stand. And together we profess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. With great faith and confidence, we come before our loving God, with all of our needs. Let us pray for the church. May we be renewed in patience and in spirit of sacrifice to do what is necessary to bring the coronavirus under control. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for healing in our nation. May those with different 
differing politic opinions regards each other with respect, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for workers. May the unemployed find jobs. May the health care and the public transport workers be safe. May teachers continue to be inspired. And may those who keep our hospitals and public spaces clean and sanitary be appreciated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those caught up in the extreme weather events. May they heal from trauma and be helped to rebuild their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick of St. Vincent's Parish and in our families. May they be healed, their loved ones strengthened in hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Eileen Amadeo and all our beloved dead and deceased members of our parish. May they know the joy and fulfillment of God's presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the needs written in our book of intentions. May we rest secure in God's attention to that which we truly need and God's unconditional love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, with faith in your final coming, we come before you with these our needs. We ask you to answer them in a way that is best for all. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you brought an offering uh, for our collection, would you please bring and place it in one of the baskets by the two candles? I'll explain this basket later on.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, who is our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of the Lord. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and you set us over the whole world in all of its wonder to be stewards in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you. And in joyful celebration, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, and all of God's holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And remember all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, with Vincent de Paul and all the saints who have praised you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. 
forever and ever. Savior's command informed by his own divine teaching, we have the privilege to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer one another an appropriate sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Diocesan Appeal, formerly called the Bishop's Appeal, supports administrative, formation, and schools and charitable aims of the work of our diocese. Our own parish has benefited from this, the, the, um, the outcome of the former Bishop's Appeal, now Diocesan Appeal. Uh, the Office of Real Property helped us renegotiate a parking lot lease with St. Rose. We have, there is seminarian, diaconate, and lay ministry formation, and Rich Athens, one of our parishioners, completed the Kateri lay ministry program this year. We also have legal support. For example, um, because of the Child Victims Act, there have been two suits filed against our parish. When those papers came, um, those, I was, just had to hand them all over to the diocesan, diocesan attorney we did not have to take responsibility for addressing those matters. Throughout COVID, we've received guidance uh, offered extensively. So it used to be that parishes had an, uh, an assessment that if we didn't achieve the amount the diocese thought we should contribute, we had to come up with it out of our um, ordinary um, budget. But now it is a goal. And so the goal for our parish is $118,000. We already have $36,000 in gifts and pledges. So you probably, if you've go, given before to the Bishop's Appeal, now the Diocesan Appeal, you probably received something in the mail. Um, and if maybe you didn't know what it was all about, you tossed it. I have envelopes for the camera too, uh, that I can, we don't receive that many envelopes but I have envelopes that I can uh, give to you if you want to make a contribution. And that would be mailed in, or you can also do it online. Putting down that one prop, picking up this prop. So every year we have had our giving tree in which specific gifts are identified for the children who are served, whose families are served by our food pantry. And because of COVID and not wanting to risk um, oh, too much in physical interaction, uh, visiting people's homes with the gifts, or even sending people out shopping, this year we decided to shift the process to requesting donations or gift cards. So we, the guests of our food pantry, the guests of our food pantry were asked, would you prefer to have a gift card to this store or this store, Walmart or Target? And so they've responded what their preference would be. So now um, we're looking for your support to either provide a $25 gift card or to make a donation in whatever amount you would like to give. Each ch the child in each family or each family will receive a $25 gift card at the store of the family's choosing uh, for, for them to be able to purchase Christmas presents. So we'll be doing, take, making this appeal na from now until early December. We also are going to be giving the, the families a bus pass if they would like it so that they can get themselves to the stores and back because of course many of our guests arrive by foot. Just want to remind you of some other um, ongoing programs. The Just Mercy um, um, Just Mercy book discussion, which is, takes place both online and in person. The Monday evening scripture, scripture reflections. Also, our Christmas gifts for the homebound. These are handmade articles that will help them feel warm and loved, and those can be left outside in the vestibule. And uh, um, there was something more I was going to say about that. Uh, they're due uh, December 10th is the last day we'll be collecting. Just to remind everyone of the need to have volunteers to wipe down the chairs after mass, to leave your worship aid on the chair that you sat in so we know where to clean the chairs. And exit is by the Madison Avenue door. Of 
good news, Amy Biancali, one of our parishioners, won an award for the uh, what uh, was honored for in the Work of Art Award by the Albany Institute of Art, and she's a phenomenal writer and member of our community. Also, Barbara and Frank Dewar celebrated their 58th, will be celebrating their 58th wedding anniversary this week, and, and we want to give them a shout out. So you're probably thinking she went on a silent retreat and now all she can do is talk. <laughs> One last thing, any birthdays or other anniversaries that we should acknowledge? Okay, we'll have a blessed week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. We go in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks. Thanks be to God. We are marching in the light of 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 God. We are marching. Come on.